Namaste, I am Anita Goa. If you're new to me and my channel, welcome. For those of you who have been here for a while, I have gotten requests over a period of time from several of you on how you can deepen your at-home yoga practice. The latest request came from David and as we were conversing in the comments, we came up with the plan of starting this educational series with the theme of alignment. This is a huge subject and please know I am only skimming the surface here, but I am hoping that this will spark an interest for you to go and do your own research. Let me know if you have any questions. At the present time, I have three video themes planned, including this one. So the series will be as long as you have questions and interest. So please let me know in the comments what you think. Alignment is a term we use to describe a way of practicing yoga asana in order to get the most out of the yoga positions we put ourselves in, but also to minimize any risk of injury. You might have heard the words like correct or ideal when describing alignment and immediately felt judged and wondering, am I doing it right? And at the same time as being told how your alignment should be, you're asked to listen to your body and follow what your body is saying to you above what a teacher is saying. I can understand if you find it confusing. For me, as a practitioner of yoga and yoga teacher, alignment has never been about putting myself or a student in a box and separating those who do it right from those who do it wrong. No. Alignment to me offers options for all levels, shapes, and sizes. It's not about doing it perfectly. I always encourage the use of props, blocks, belts, bolsters, chairs, as a way to find the safest and most beneficial way for your body to fully experience each asana. I believe that when you understand what your alignment is, you have the tools to make almost any yoga pose work for your body. That said, our yoga asana practice in the Western world at least is evolving and there is a lot of talk about whether alignment is important or not and whether you need to know a lot of anatomy to practice safely. It's also interesting when you start to study the different yoga traditions that their interpretations of alignment can often contradict each other. So who to believe? It can cause confusion, but it can also open the door for your own individualized approach by taking what works for you from different methods. That's what I do. <laughs> I feel and I believe it is important to create a stable and strong foundation for your body to practice within and knowing how to position your body in each asana is alignment to me. I don't think it's helpful on Instagram when they put, you know, do the pose this way, check, and not that way, be cross. I feel that it's not either or. To me, I feel that creates division and not inclusion. So if yoga is for everyone, which I believe it is, it's not either or. There are a lot of levels in between. Hmm, that's the million pound question. Is there a right answer? I don't know, but my answer is the right alignment is the one that works for you. And it is probably going to change over time. And as much as alignment is part of a good yoga asana practice, there are other elements that play a role as well, in my opinion. Many yoga injuries are cumulative, they happen over time. So even if your chaturanga is practiced with your most perfect form, if you do too many and too much, it can result in injury to shoulders, rotator cuffs, and wrists. 
how you practice, how often you practice, do you push yourself too much, do you avoid certain poses that are important and that affects the whole, are questions I will address over the next themes. So make sure that you are subscribed and turn on the notifications so you don't miss it. It might just be the information that you need. It's going to take some time and experience to cultivate an awareness of your alignment and where your body is in space. Here are a few suggestions that I hope can be helpful for anyone regardless of how long you've been practicing. Get to know the asanas, learn their names. I'm an advocate of including the Sanskrit name as well. Learn the benefits, what muscles are engaged, key alignment principles and what category the asana falls under. There are main categories of asanas and they are standing, seated, relaxation, inversions, arm balancing poses. And then there are subcategories of these. There are forward bends, backward bends, twists, and side bends. There's also three phases to an asana, moving into it, staying in it, and moving out of it. Often the moving out of it is the one to pay extra close attention to and where the injuries can happen. Refrain from moving further into an asana than what you can take yourself effortlessly out of it. In terms of anatomy, it's helpful to know at least the major muscle groups, and it's a good thing to know how your spine, your hips, your shoulders move in the different asanas. Don't be afraid to integrate tools like blocks, belts, bolsters, and chairs. They are there to support you. Have a dialogue with yourself and notice how your body responds. Your body will talk back to you and it probably already is. You just have to listen. As you practice, you start to embody your practice and you will know what is right and what is wrong for you. Please trust your own inner knowing. I recommend Googling somatic dominance and somatic movement. It's a very interesting conversation that is going on in the yoga world these days. Here's the thing, no matter how good your alignment is or has been, no matter how conscientious you've been in your practice, as you get older, things happen and aches happen. You never think it's going to, but trust me, it does. And then if you can't do certain asanas that you previously were able to do, then what? Then what is yoga with a capital Y? Then yoga isn't just asana, it's much more than that. It's not about getting into the asanas or what I call acquiring asanas. There is no reward for being able to do all of these different positions. Yoga is so much more than that. It's a practice and it's a lifetime practice. The reward is in being who you are and sharing who you truly are in all the situations you encounter in your life. This to me is about making your asana practice sustainable for yourself so you can grow physically but also mentally and spiritually and shine your brightest light in all phases of your life. And thank you to David and all of you who have inspired what I hope will become a long running dialogue of how to deepen your practice. Let's talk in the comments. I will see you there. Thank you so much for listening and for watching. We came up with a plan of starting this educational series with the theme of enlightenment. No, I mean alignment. Alignment. <laughs>